That's all right. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we got some adjustments here. Um, some of y'all remember the Tinsleys <coughs> used to come here. Yeah, Dale. Dale passed away Sunday afternoon. Uh, I think he was 74, 75. Um, he had COVID, had pneumonia, was in the hospital, and just never got any better. So we want to remember that family. Uh, they're going to have visitation, and it's Saturday, which is how the weather's going to be, but over at Goodwill Baptist. Uh, from 2 to 3 visitation and then 3 o'clock will be a memorial service. So, um, just uh, I know some of you all remember Dale. Great guy. Uh, willing to do anything for you and just a, a, a pleasure to be around. He's just, just a great guy. And I think his sons are about the same, Todd and um, Rob. But anyway, uh, we need to remember that family. Um, I think what else I got this week. Uh, some of y'all might remember the uh, Elaine Farrell family. Uh, she's been having some family problems, nieces, nephews, I don't know, kind of down the line type of thing. Um, <clears throat> so we just need to remember that family as they uh, go through some of these trials, uh, as it were. Um, don't know if anybody else that's just um, besides our, our normal folks who need to be prayed for. Uh, let's remember them. Uh, now I never heard from Scott. I guess, did he have a funeral for his brother in law? I have not heard anything. Okay. I, I, at all. I'm what he said Wednesday night was that. Um, that another part of the family was doing the arrangements and they'd sort of been left out. So. I don't. Okay. I talked to him on, on Facebook or texted, but he really never said one way or the other. But anyway, we need to remember Scott and pray for him and his family there. Anybody else we need to, to mention? Jordan, give me a second on the soapbox, if you will. You mentioned Dale Tinsley? Yes. We shared an aunt, and I'll explain that. Um, She's on, he's on the other side of the family, on her side of the family, my, my, my uncle's mm -hmm. wife. When, the, when, a, when a generation passes away, when, they cut, when it gets down to the cousins, we forget each other. That should not happen. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, even though you might be outlaws and in-laws, we, we just, things fall apart. And that, that's not the way that families ought to be. We ought to be closer. Mm -hmm. We ought yeah. to be closer. Exactly. Well, I've seen it with my, my cousins. I have two that live, live in Mechanicsville, Mark lives there. And then, uh, but anyway, we, it looks like we just, we all go our separate ways, mm -hmm. have families and the things that go on. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, nothing better than family. And they ought to be close. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And it's hard when that doesn't happen. Everybody has a phone. Most of us yeah, have yeah. looked at ours multiple times this morning, so there's yep. no excuse not to communicate. <clears throat> but so, somebody needs to be that one, it, and it might just be one in a family, yeah. to be the glue that holds the rest of them together, at least as long as they can. Mm. And back in the day when, when communication was, was a handwritten letter, it was my grandmother. Uh, yeah. Well, it's certainly more easier to do it with, with phone and text and everything else that's going on. But, uh, George, his grandmother also kept a diary. <clears throat> How many years did she have a diary from 19... 35 or 40. Until 1962. Two. Uh, she kept a diary every day of her life. If uh, it just said somebody went to school or it rained today, that, you know, she kept that diary. 
I think there's a couple things I just don't want to put in there, but they're all good and they're all bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, does anybody else need to be mentioned? Or? Uh, pray for Nancy and myself. Uh, I don't want to make any quick, rash decisions about church. So I try to catch the latest news of what's going on and what's going to be best for the folks in church. And so, uh, how do you say that nicely? <laughs> Give Nancy a little bit of a break until we see what's going on. <laughs> when I called the other night, she's got a lot to call. What are we going to do? Well, she doesn't make the decision. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, we want to wait and be sure everything's clear and safe for everybody to come. So, uh, just pray for us um, as those days come up at times. Uh, that we do the right thing and uh, what's best for everybody. So I uh, just remember that as, as the weather comes in. Well, I've, got um, it, I've got it down pat now because I think I had three back to back <coughs> calls. Are we having church? And I, I don't know. Thank you. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, and, and that's and true. Then, and then the column all went out. Yeah. So anyway, just uh, bear with us. Like I said, we want to do what's best. And uh, uh, if we do get a big snow, we certainly have to have the, the parking lot clear so people can't get in and out. Sidewalks is usually not that, because we can use the back sidewalk, which is short, clear, and, and can do that. The parking lot's going to be the biggest thing is when we can <coughs> get to that and have it cleared. So that's, that's one of the major problems we have. But anyway, pray for us about that. George. Yes. Can we, Ron and I tell you about a rare opportunity we had last night and some of the rest of you uh, might no. have to. I don't know if everybody knew. We had the opportunity to see the International Space Station fly over. And it was bright and clear and you could see it and it was really moving on. <laughs> but I think that's a that's a rare opportunity. Yeah. We may not ever get that again. Right. I went out, I can't special. say that I saw it or didn't see it, but well, I tried. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, it's one of those rare occasions that you do run across from time to time. It took uh, about four minutes to get from where you could recognize yes. it to where it was out of yes. sight. Out and it disappeared high. behind the cloud where, where we were standing. So uh, we got about four minutes worth of it. Well, cool. It was cool. Yeah. All right. Does so anybody else need to be mentioned? We don't. Uh, we got Bill Thomas coming in Sunday, actually the next two Sundays, I need to reschedule Scott, he was supposed to speak this Sunday, so we re reschedule, we'll, we'll, we'll reschedule him, uh, so I'll be praying for Bill, um, and I'll get back with Brother Barnes too, and um, see what we can work out there. So, does anything else need to be mentioned? I don't know if anything actually coming up except for our uh, Bible study tonight. I'm sure Scott will have it. And uh, if you haven't come, you ought to come. It's uh, very interesting. Everybody has a chance to say something if you want to and uh, meet with some other folks. And um, it's going to be in James chapter 2, 14 through 26. Has he said that out? Yeah. He did yesterday, so I could yeah. type it up, so I could have it for tonight. He oh, sent it to me. Okay, because I hadn't, I haven't seen it. I haven't got it yet. But anyway, uh, but yeah, be be with us here at six o'clock, and uh, we usually go about an hour. So uh, come and be with us. Remember, Virgil, um, he's he's home, but things are not any better, really. But. Remember Jonathan also, he was uh, in California for a sales meeting and I guess most of him just heard about this something other on the phone, five, number five or something mm -hmm. like that. 5G network. And he's and been having to be shipped or fly from one end of the state to Seattle. Washington for a four-hour layover, and that's one of the one of the uh, areas that they're talking about maybe a possible problem with the 
with the planes, but I think before I left, I heard that there were some changes made. Maybe they moved it on, but I'm not real sure. But he's not happy about a four-hour layover in Seattle because he's heading for for South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that could be rough sometimes. He, he used to delight when he had a chance to go flying. Now then, it can be maneuvered to try to get through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's remember, remember that. Yeah, those layovers can be rough. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Brother Ron, would you open us up in prayer? God, we love you and we thank you for loving us. We thank you for this time that we can meet in your name and in your presence. We feel you with us, God, and we need you. Be with us during this time as we study your word. Remove from our minds and hearts, we pray, all those things which would come between us and you, that we might know more about you and love you more. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, she'll turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. And God word says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfringed love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure, uh, pure heart fervently. So we'll be talking about love this morning. Um, Peter wrote this letter to the Corinthians excuse me, to the Christians who were scattered in various places. Imagine a small group of believers getting this letter in Galatia, for example, and reading this command for being reminded by those words, hey, you are not in this thing all by yourself. You are eternally connected to all those who used to be, uh, to be with because of Jesus. You are a part of a spiritual family that will exist forever. And I think, you know, that's one thing about a church. When we come to church, people say they stay home and watch it on TV and this, that, the other. But if you don't get the fellowship, if you don't get the one-on-one the -on -one with other Christians, you're, you're missing out. Um, we're here to lift each other up, to support each other. Uh, to help each other in any way that we can. And Peter's going to bring this out as we go through. So, um, And I, I know some days we don't probably feel like that we're in it with other spiritual Christians and, and uh, the love that's there, but we are. And we're all connected through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> um, all right, here we go. Again, I'm going to make it easy on you, okay? So feel free to jump in and help out. In the last part of verse 22, what are we commanded to do? Love one another. You said that too quick. Well, I cheated. I don't know. But that's it. Oh, you cheated. No. Yes, that's what we do, to love one another. Um, what makes it possible for us to love one another? in the first part of verse 22. Because we have purified souls and we know the truth comes from the Spirit. And that's We're what all we in it together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now this next question is, I did a little research on it, but we'll, we'll see where y'all are with that. Um, the next question is, what is unfringed love? What does unfringe mean? Unfeigned. Unfeigned? Yes. It's not kind of an orange. Okay. Your glasses are messing up. See, I'm learning too. <laughs> it means not fake. It's what? Not fake. Okay. Sincere. 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 Okay. What I came with, I did, actually did a little research. It's, it's a genuine love. It's a sincere love that we have. Um, and again, you can break that even a little further and say it's a real love, 
a true love, an honest love, and through Christ, that's where we, we can love like that. We, we get, as we love Christ, then we can love others because of the love of Christ that we have. And uh, so, yeah, that's where our Christian love comes from, and it's through Christ. Um, how does Peter say we are to love each other? Pure heart. Pure heart. And, uh, of course, as Christians, we should be living the pure life. We're not going to be perfect, of course, but it's through Jesus Christ that we can. I, I'm not up, up to snuff on a lot of things, but didn't Jesus say, love one another as I love you? Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that a little bit later, but oh. you're exactly right. Exactly right. Um, so yeah, as Christ loves us and loves the church, then we are to love others as we're here to serve Him. Okay, uh, let's see here how we're going to do this. So I'm going to turn to Romans 12.10. And if you get it, just holler at me. Romans 12, 10. Okay, got it. All right, hang on just a second, Mike. All right, what we're looking at is, it says, which of the following statements is true in light of the instructions of verse 22? All right, so what does Romans 12, 10 say, Mike? Uh, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in uh, diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Okay. I guess it was 10 and 11. Yeah. That kind of brings it more to light too, doesn't it? Uh, there's, there's no place for selfishness among Christians. As Paul tells us all the time, and as I tell you all the time, we're to die to self. That Christ can live through us. And so there's no, no place for selfishness as we live for Him. Um, I'm going to do that anyway. James chapter 2. This is a, a little lengthy, but uh, we'll read it anyway. James chapter 2. And actually we'll be reading the whole chapter. If somebody wants to read that for me. I'll start. Okay, I'll tell you what, Gene, let's pull it up. Um, won't you read through verse 13? Alright. And then somebody want to read the last part of that? Yeah, I can read from about, what, 14 to 26? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah. My brethren, have not, faith, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory with respect of persons. For there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that wears the nice clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor man, You stand there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are not become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend at one point, he is guilty of all. 
For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Uh, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to him, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you not, uh, but do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? You see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone, or faith only. Likewise was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And a whole lot in that James chapter 2. But as Christians, we should be living that way. Uh, and as we read and as we study, as, as we get into God's Word, He tells us what we should be doing and we ought to be paying attention. Uh, that we can live the best life for Him that we can, especially when it comes to other Christians, other folks. Uh, the first part of that, it just came to mind that we'll have different people who come through those doors. And at one time we had a bus ministry and with kids, you go get a whole lot of different things. But you know what? Christ loved them. And we need to love them. We don't need to set them over here in the corner out the way. Or somebody has needs. In fact, we had a gentleman who has been, I guess, maybe six weeks or so that came and sat in the back there. Uh, I don't know all the needs and I don't think I've heard from him. I don't know if anybody else has. But we, we welcome him in. Everybody's welcome here to, to serve the Lord. And like I said, we're a hospital for needs, for sinful needs. We need to come and repent. And that God can touch our, our, our bodies and we can accept him and live for him. Uh, but so, you know, there's just so many aspects that we sometimes maybe overlook. But as people come in, whether they're dressed in the finest suit or come in shorts and I don't think I've seen any tank tops, but uh, you never know. But they're welcome to come in and to, and to learn what Jesus is all about. And we need to be sure that those doors are open to receive those folks. And then, uh, like I said, there's just so many things in this verse that it, it, it covers it. Uh, so we need to be ready to live the life for Christ no matter what comes our way. We always want to do do our best. And then uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, verses 2 and 3. Somebody like to read that? Okay. And so, uh, we're a few minutes ago we discussed and invited the one to come into the church. Uh, regardless of how they, I guess, act, but the church is a, a place that we should respect in our entering and our best. 
I guess I was taught in, in the country that the two places that, that, we, that we dressed it was the doctor and the church. <laughs> and uh, grandmother used to say the church is to be respected and what you wear or how you act. And uh, that kind of stayed with me the whole time that I heard you mention just now. And speak of love, love without substance, didn't mean very much, you say. You've got to show, show love as well you can speak it from your, from your mouth. And uh, we have children, I, I, I have my four kids and uh, bring them up in the world. My daughter spoke to me like four last, and she was telling about why all the killings they're having in Chicago. Chicago and California, and I would say to her, because things are out of order, and we go get back to the word, we go back to the Bible. <clears throat> when things are out of order, it don't work properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she said, I said, if you ever went to the army and service, like you know, in our time, everything is done in order. And we are out of order, first to have raising our kids, kids uh, education begin at home. And the school is just an extension of the education that we teach them at home, they're supposed to be. But we want the government to teach our kids and, to, and, and, and take the power from the parents, then we have these problems. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they, they often, we often talk a lot and explain to them because uh, in my speeches that I go around, I believe that, that parents have a responsibility to their kids regardless of what the government says or do about it. Well, you know how the law has changed nowadays with uh, with uh, this homosexuality and stuff of that nature. And I told that uh, that's an abomination against God. That's not that's not right. So we when you have kids and my granddaughter, she's in Merlin University, she's in college up there, and she comes down with a lot of stuff. Now see, generations that like you said before changes. A lot of stuff change generation. So a lot of things she asking me now, I have lived some of it, I've experienced it. So I had passed on to let them know what's right and what's wrong. Not to get involved with, with, uh, with uh, we, we call it liberalism. Uh, we're conservatives. <laughs> so so I, I, I don't know how you, you know, but I tell them to stay, try to stay on the side of the law. So, so uh, I heard you read answer just now, but the, uh, I just told me like, you know, I didn't mean to just hold the whole service up there. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, go ahead, Larry. I believe in, uh, I, I don't know exactly, but I believe in uh, Corinthians, Paul mentioned how we should dress, and he says that uh, women should dress modestly and uh, not have uh, like gaudy earrings and uh, bracelets and a lot of jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, just dress modestly. And also with a man, they should dress uh, properly also. Yeah. And with that, like I said, if people come in the door, they, they don't know that. And so we need to accept them and, and, and work with them until they know. And, um, you know, when you don't know, you don't know, but we can teach. And, and as Christ ran across many folks um, in different areas and, and so forth, not everybody accepted that, but Christ was there for them to teach them. And again, we're here to teach and to help as we can. Uh, myself and, and Tina, we ran across a, a person that uh, we invited to come to church, and uh, she's not a member of the church. She's never been to the church yet. And uh, she said, well, what, what should I wear? I said, the Lord doesn't, doesn't care right. as long as you show up and, and you learn his word and listen to what the Lord has to say to you. Yeah, uh, you know, the main thing would be to be modest, yeah. but as far as, you know, like say, class A suit and tie and to vest it, and that, you don't need all that. Christ wants you in the church. That's right. And the that's the important heart. thing is that we're here. The Lord looks on our heart, not your clothes we've done. Exactly. And we need to treat people that way too. Yeah. Just because somebody doesn't dress or look exactly like us, don't shun them when they walk through the door. That's not what you do. Right. You put out your hand and welcome and let them know that they're welcome. And I think our church does that. I think we. Yeah, uh, I think so. And, and, for, for being that way. 
Mike read that too in, in James chapter 2, is that if we run across people with need, we, we try to help them. I mean, if you can, sometimes you're maybe not able to, but they need food or, or need clothes or just whatever. You know, we, we ought to try to help as we can in the name of the Lord. Christians should never be without anything. Yeah. Another Christian should be that help. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. As an, excuse nope. me. That's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. As an aside to what you're saying, we should not be about the business of making other people like us. We need to be pointing them towards Christ, mm -hmm. that they can be more like Him, which is where we ought to be mm -hmm. looking to. Exactly. Exactly. I, I read a story about uh, a church, and a church was uh, waiting for the new pastor to come. And uh, it was a Sunday, and <clears throat> this new pastor came to the church and came in, and he looked terrible. He had a big old beard, and uh, his clothes were tattered, and he uh, just looked terrible. And when he came in, no one in the church welcomed him. No one said anything to him. So he went up to the front and was sitting, and uh, someone came to him and said, uh, uh, you need to move to the back of the church and all of that. And he says, well, okay. And he moved to the back of the church and uh, uh, the deacon says, oh, a reflection, the deacon says, uh, well, we're waiting for the new pastor and, and we don't know what's holding him up, but he's supposed to be on his way. And they waited for a long time and they waited for a long time. And they said, well, we're still waiting for the pastor. So this guy got up and he walked to the front of the church and it took uh, all of the things that he had on, off that looked uh, tattered and torn. He says, I'm your new pastor. He says, when I came to the church, no one welcomed me. That's going to change. <laughs> and he uh, gave the church the directions that he wanted. But uh, the way you dressed didn't make any difference. Yeah. yeah. The Lord don't care. He don't care about that. But like I said, we're not here for us. We're here for the Lord Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, Whoever comes to that door needs him. Yeah, and if you well. are a Christian, there's things going on in your life you need help with. Yeah. And God is. And that's where we get it. It's through Jesus Christ. Um, in Ephesians chapter 4, 2 and 3, with all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And here again, there's no room for division as Christians. As we come into God's house, there's no room for division. If we have some, maybe not agree with everybody, and if we're not going to be able to sell it, then we agree to disagree. But we're here to love the Lord. And again, that love carries along the way. Um, then we'll see what happens. Some discussion. Is it easy to love others? Um, sometimes. Sometimes it's hard. It, sometimes I don't feel like I love the man I live with very nicely, but I'm, I do. But we don't agree on everything. We're not twins, we're independent people, and we don't do everything alike. We try to agree on the things that are important, but um, hey, we're all individuals, you know. We, we don't always agree with opinions and thoughts and all kinds of things that I could start naming, but that doesn't <laughs> diminish the fact that we should love each other and come together in love. And, under the umbrella of Christ. Yeah, and I've always felt that, I guess I'm sure y'all have heard this too, is with marriage. Before you get married, everything is yours. You do it your way, what color you want, whatever. You get married, that's cut back. You gotta share it, you gotta understand each other. And then when you have kids, man has nothing. <laughs> uh, but it's the idea, and I think that the people nowadays don't understand it. You have to work together. You've got to work through things. Uh, the Christian life's not a piece of cake. You expect marriage to be a piece of cake? No. Mm -hmm. You've got to work together. And um, so anyway, whatever that's worth, <laughs> Eric. It's called compromise. Exactly. 
Yeah, well, like I say, you gotta work, and, and if you can't agree on one particular thing, you agree to disagree, and you move on. You don't uh, dwell on it, because then you will get into, get into problems. Um, all right, here's another easy one. Get on your thinking hats. Who is our greatest example when it comes to loving each other? Christ. Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, Christ, he, he went to the cross for everybody. No particular group or, or whatever. He died for everyone. Everyone has the same opportunity to accept him. And so, uh, and not everybody will. I think that's some, some of the things that we do as a church, we need to realize that not everybody accepted Christ when he was on earth. And not everybody's going to accept what, what we do, getting his word out, trying to share the gospel, uh, wanting to see, see our, our family, our friends get saved. But not everybody's going to do that. And so we just need to pray for them and work for them. But we are to love everyone, no matter what. And the toughest one is loving our enemies. But the Bible tells us we need to love our enemies. Uh, in Galatians 5, 13 and 14 says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We really need to, to think about that because sometimes it is, it's not easy to love everybody. Not everybody we come in contact with is just going to be our best friend. Uh, when I was working with Mack Trucks, worked at the counter, we had a customer down in, I think it was Chesapeake, BFI. It used to be trash people. I don't know if they're still out there or not, but anyway. The guy in the parts department, when he called me, I knew it by his voice. And I promise you, my blood pressure shot to the ceiling. <laughs> All I had to do was, not what he wanted, but just to hear his voice. And uh, to make an example of that, I had to get over that. That wasn't his problem. He wasn't even worried about it. I'm the one that had the problem. But we, we do. We meet people like that. It's just, we, we don't connect. And that... Uh, God gives us to work through those things. Um, and then back to Ephesians chapter 4. <coughs> verse 31 and 32. And I think it actually goes into chapter 5, verse 2. But, um, Ephesians 4, 31, we'll start there. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Hang on just a second. Chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear, dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. I think it says it all. What else can you can you say to that? Um, Hard to do. We just need to love everyone. And if we have a problem, we, we need to pray about it and let God direct us. Mike? Um, yeah, I guess going back to your original question, is it hard to love? Um, there's different kinds of love described by different words in, in, in our Greek text. Um, there's, um, there's emotional love, which is uh, eros, which is, is a romantic love. The love that uh, you have for someone you first meet them, um, and you just, you know, you just 
all in love with that person. It's an emotional, and so that's that's the best kind of eros love. It's it's an emotional. Then there's the the um, brotherly love kind of. It's the love that's returned. I I love somebody, and they love me back. And it's it's uh, you, you know it's pretty much. Um, you pat me on my back, I'll pat you on yours. It, it's the love that's reflected. Um, that's where we get the, the word Philadelphia from, city of brotherly love. Um, and then there's this another word called storage, which is a love that you have, a mother has towards a child. Now all those loves are, are I believe, are a natural type of love. But there's one love that is very difficult because that's a supernatural love. And that's the love that's agape or agapo, which is the love that Christ had towards us, where it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that that is the word agape. And that is a word that you love despite the fact there is no reflection of that love. And that's the way that God loved us. He loved us before we loved him. Total unconditional. Pardon? Total, unconditional love. Christ never put a condition, God never put a condition on the love for us. Totally unconditional love. When Christ went to the cross, his only reason was love. Now it's difficult and it's impossible for someone that's not a believer to love in such a way. Um, after a while the love gets strained. But for a Christian, it's possible in fact, it's even expected. That's why uh, the command to love is given so often. When you command somebody to do something, it's because it's not natural for them to do it in the flesh. You know, like we tell our children, go clean up your room. Um, you have to command it because it's not natural for them to do it, at least some children. And so it is when we're, when we're given the command to love one another, it's because in the flesh it's not natural, but it's possible in the spirit. And when a person is born again, that very nature of God then comes into us. And it says in, in Romans chapter 5 that the love of God is poured out upon us by the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So that when we're born again and we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive the love of God. And it's not just to be to be received, but also to, to then be exercised by us receive it and then to give it to others. Uh, that's, that's the whole idea of love. It's not to not to stay it within us, but then to flow out from us as well. So, um, and that can only happen if a person is born again. It can only happen if a person is then obedient to, um, to what the Lord is commanding us to do, and that's to love. And love doesn't necessarily have to be emotional. But love, if it's a command, that love is a decision. I decide to love a person, and then the emotions can come later. But we don't wait for the emotions to come, and then we say we love this person. We say, I desire to love this person because if God wants us to love them, therefore I will love them. And I will begin to do things that show that love, and then I will begin to get that feeling towards that particular person. Yeah. And then as we wrap up, uh, 1 John chapter 3, uh, verses 17 and 18. 1 John chapter 3, 17 and 18. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And I think that's the, the bottom line, of, you know, and I, I told Scott this the other day, and it's been a couple of years. You tell somebody, yeah, I'll pray for you. Well, a lot of times we're going to go on about our business, we'll forget it. It might pop in our minds later on, but, and hopefully it does. But what I've tried to do is that if I tell someone to pray for them, I try to stop right then and pray. And um, I think it, it means more to the person than just tell, hey, I'm going to pray for you. No, but if you stop and pray with them 
right then at first jump. I think that makes a difference uh, in, in all our, our situations. So, um, folks, if we we got to have God's love to love others. We, he set the example, and we have people in need or receive. Again, don't do it in word. Let's do it in deed. Let's act upon the love of Christ as we live for Him. Eric? Yes, uh, there's also in the Bible the book of love. Corinthians uh, chapter 13. 13. 13. Yeah. Corinthians 13. Yeah. And that describes the love, that describes that agape love, that self-giving uh, that doesn't expect right. anything in return, that is centered upon the object of the love and not centered upon ourselves. And that's, <clears throat> and that's the pattern of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you folks for coming out today. Um, just watch the weather. We'll be in touch. <laughs> can figure out what's going on. But uh, thank you all for being here. Just have a word of prayer. Father, again, we just thank you for who you are. Mm -hmm. That you love us, you care for us, you watch over us. And fathers, as your children, can we take that love and share it with others? As we run across folks who have needs, or, uh, just to have a prayer with them. Uh, to talk to them about your word. Mm -hmm. We are to up, uplift others as you have uplifted us through your word, Father. So help us to do that. Help us to reach out. Help us to help each other. And if we do have a disagreement, help us to work it out. And if not, again, we agree to disagree. And we just love you and as you love us to continue to get your word out to to be your servants, Father. And so we continue to pray for our church and the pulpit committee, Father, as we is search for a pastor. Uh, we thank you for the folks that are here and the needs. We thank of the Tinsley family that you'll be with them in a special way. And Father, for our nation and for our leaders, we, we pray that they'll turn to you. Father, we need that. That we can serve you even through our government and do what is right. So, Father, just use each of us. Help us to accept those opportunities that you give us, that we can share a testimony, share a verse in the Bible, uh, that we can plant that seed that you would have us to do, Father. So, again, we thank you for loving us, actually be with us, watch over us, keep us safe. And we just praise you for all that you do for us and through us. In Christ's name, amen. 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 amen.